What is going on guys? Welcome back to the C programming tutorial series for beginners. In this episode, we're going to learn about typecasting, strings and constants. So let us get right into it. All right, so let us get started by talking about constants first and constants are actually quite similar to variables. The only difference is that you can only assign a value once. So with a variable, we can do the following thing. We talked about this in episode number two already. I can say int a equals 10 and then I can print the value of a and then I can change the value of a and print it again. And I'm not going to run this now, but this is going to work. So it's going to first print 10 and then it's going to print 20 and this works. With constants, this is not possible. We can define constants by adding the const keyword and this uh, results in the fact that this produces an error here. It says cannot assign a variable a with const qualified type const int. So this means that this here works because we can assign a value to the constant once. This is the constant value. We can then use it, but we cannot change it anymore. And this can be useful if you work, for example, with something like, I don't know, um, we can name this pi and the value of this is 3.141. Um, there you go. Auto completion. And of course, this would have to be a float, not an integer. Uh, but this would be an example of where you could use a constant or another one could be you want to have a constant character for new line. And this is essentially just backslash n. Right. So this is one thing that you can do as well. Now, keep in mind that there is a naming convention. So if you create uh, variables, so if you say, OK, uh, my variable, for example, you can name it in lowercase. You can use um, underscores. Now you should pick one one case that you stick to. Uh, you can also try mixed case or camel case. So my variable like that. Uh, but if you define constants, it's the convention that you use all uppercase characters. So new line like that or pi like that. This is how you should define constants. And you can also use them in the same way. So we can just go ahead and say uh, print F and then my favorite number is and then we can say uh, maybe point, uh, let's go with 5f. And then we can also add percent %c and then pi and new line like that. So this should work. Let's see if we can compile this. GCC main C output is main. And there you go, it works. So this is how you use basic constants. Now let us talk about um, about strings real quick because strings are well, it is a data type, but in C, it's a little bit more difficult than in Python. Now, I don't think that this right now is the perfect moment to talk about strings because they're based on arrays. But I want to at least mention them here because we talked about data types, we talked about operators, and it feels a bit incomplete if we just go on without strings. So we're going to discuss strings in more detail uh, when we come to arrays. But still, I'm going to mention here how strings are constructed in uh, C just so we know how to do this. Now, first of all, if I just print print F here, this already is a string. So this here is a string, but it's not a string stored in a variable. So I can do hello world here without a problem. And I can also use percent s here as a placeholder and insert a string here like that. Not a problem at all. We can see that this works. There you go. Um, but if you want to store a string into a variable, you cannot just use a string data type. So um, if I go ahead, for example, and say string s equals this doesn't uh, this does not work in C. What we have to do in C is we have to define a chain of characters, a string of characters, because that is what a string fundamentally is. It is just a collection of characters. So in order to define a string in C, we need to define a character array. And this can be done by just saying uh, character and then the name of the string. So for example, my string and then here uh, some some square brackets with the length of the string. And then we can call this hello 
for example, like that. Uh, and then we can go ahead and say print f percent s backslash n my string and that's it. So again, if I now go ahead and say compile this, you will see that this works. Um, so we're not going to discuss what this exactly means here, because for those of you who are not familiar with arrays or lists in general, this might be confusing. So we're going to talk about this when we come to arrays. But in case you just want to define some strings, as you're used to uh, in, in other languages like Python or Java, uh, you can just instead of writing string, you can write character and then uh, the name of the string and the length. Now, this is important, you need to specify the length. You can also make this dynamic, but this is a more advanced topic. We're going to talk about this in more advanced videos in the future. Uh, for now, just know that you can define strings like that. All right, so last but not least, I want to talk about typecasting in today's video. So what do we do, for example, if we have an integer and we want to convert it to a float or vice versa, or maybe you have a character and you want to get the ASCII code or you have an ASCII code and you want to get the character or maybe even more advanced, you have a string and you want to extract a number from that string because the string contains a number. We're going to talk about this here uh, briefly. And unless you're dealing with some more complex stuff like a string, it's actually quite straightforward. What you do is you define a variable, for example, integer a. And what you do here is you just uh, specify the data type uh, that you want to typecast this to. So int and then whatever it is. So for example, int uh, and then a character, I don't know, for example, a. This, was, uh, this would typecast the character a into an integer value. We can see that this is the case by just printing a percent D backslash N and a. There you go. And you can see that a has the code 65. So we can also do this the other way around, we can just say character B equals character and then we can for example, say 66, this should be B. And then I can just print a character. So percent C backslash N and B. There you go. Um, so this works for all sorts of data types, all sorts of primitive data types. So we can convert characters to integers, integers to floats. I don't think that we can convert floats to characters, though, because that would not make a lot of sense. Uh, I'm not actually sure what happens if we try to do this. So let's go ahead and try it. Uh, let's say float C equals uh, actually, like that, it should work because then it's just going to take the integer value. But let's try to do it the other way around. What happens if I say characters C equals character of 24.567. And then we print the character. Okay, so it results in something maybe if I change this here to 66, will it result in B? Yeah, okay, so it basically truncates the decimal places doesn't doesn't care about this. Um, but you can also do this with uh, floating point numbers and integers. So if you have int c equals int of a floating point number, it's just going to cut off the decimal places. Um, and the other way around, if you have an integer, and uh, you convert it to a float. So if you say float f equals float, um, float uh, 10, for example, this will convert this into a float. And we can then work with it. Uh, in order to do some floating point calculations. Um, well, what else we can do is we can work with strings. Now strings are more complicated because strings are collections as we talked about this, uh, they're collections of characters. So it's a little bit more complex. Of course, you can write your own functions, but we haven't talked about functions yet. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to use functions that are already part of the C uh, libraries. And for that, we can start by extracting an integer from a string. How do we do that? Let's say we have a character uh, point or a character array with 10 um, with 10 digits and or 10 characters. And then I have the number 100 or 1788. For example, this is 
the number, but it's contained in a string. So it's not actually a, a numerical value. It's just a string with these characters representing digits, but they're not digits in terms of um, that we can do calculations with them. They're just text that represents a number. So if we want to actually get a number out of this, we can say int i equals, and then we use the function a t uh, t o i. And this basically, uh, I think for this, we need to, <clears throat> sorry, for this, we need to include the std lib dot h, because otherwise it uh, doesn't know the function. And then we can go ahead and say print f. And we can print a number. And what we can do here is we can do calculations with it. So we can say i plus 10. And this is important because if we try to add 10 to a string, it doesn't work. So let's see if this works. There you go. So we get this number converted to an integer, add 10 to it, and now it works. Now, just let me show you that this does not work with a string. I don't even think that I'm going to be able to compile as you can see here. So I got a warning, I am able to compile those. So uh, yeah, this results in something that doesn't make a lot of sense. So this is how you do it for integers and strings. Now, if we don't have um, an integer, but a floating point number like that, we can also use a to f. So we can change this here to float. and print f backslash n like that. And there you go. Now we get some additional places here that are not really necessary. So actually, we can try to say 0.3 f. And now it works. Uh, so I think we can also look up demand pages in Vim, so it takes a while. Or maybe it's it's lagging. Oh, there you go. So let me just resize this a little bit. And up here, you can see a to f converts a string to a double. Um, yeah, basically, you have the attribute and it returns a double whenever you try to look or whenever you want to look up a function what it does uh, from from the C standard library. What you can do is you can just um, type man and then the function name. So man a to i, for example, and you will see this Linux programmers manual. And you can see that this converts a string to an integer. You can also do the same thing with a to f. You can also do the same thing with I think print f and so on and so forth. And if you are using Vim, what you can do is um, now I closed everything. If you are using Vim, what you can do is you can just go over the function and then press uh, shift K and then it's going to open up the man pages with syntax highlighting in Vim. So this is also one thing that you can do. Now, last but not least, let's talk about how we can actually do it the other way around. How can I take an integer and turn it into a string? So let's say, for example, I have this string buffer here, but I don't have any values in there. Uh, this is actually quite simple. All we need to do is we need to call the function s printf. So this is basically the same as printf, but we can specify the target. So we can specify where we print this to because printf just prints it out onto the screen out to std out. And s printf, we can say print this into the buffer. So print this into my string. And what I want to print here is percent %d. Um, and for example, an integer. Let's call it i and let's define it up here. i and i equals 20. Uh, and of course, this needs to be a string. So this basically means that we print the the number i into my string instead of doing this to std out. And then of course, we can also print f um, my string. There you go. And this works with all the different data types. So whatever you can print out on the screen, you can print into uh, a string array as well.